Okay, uh, hi, Steve Akai. I'm just going to be doing a presentation on safety instrumentation. Just a very quick overview of some of the key concepts and obviously uh, discussing safety integrity levels, which you hear about. So, very brief um, focus. Slides are pretty comprehensive. Um, and obviously, um, if you have any questions, please drop us a line. I'll only be too willing to um, talk further. Where are we now? Can't possibly happen to us, which is the usual attitude of most uh, people, I guess, uh, with all the pressures of modern day life. Um, the reasons for this particular emphasis over the last 15 years on safety instrumentation systems is um, all the massive disasters we've had over the years, and probably uh, there's even more um, opportunity for these disasters with. Um, catastrophic amounts of fuel and um, dangerous uh, liquids all in one spot controlled by a uh, control system, by a computer. So here's an example of Flixborough. Warm Sunday afternoon, June the 1st, well, middle of summer in the Northern Hemisphere. One moment the teacups are tinkling and the kettle's whistling. Next moment, a massive explosion. So. Um, Nipro Chemical Works, 1st of June 1974. Cyclohexane vapor cloud, 15 tons of TNT, 28 people killed. So, um, extremely nasty accident. Another one was Savisa in Italy. 41 barrels containing toxic residues go missing, found incinerated and thrown late 85. Um, unexpected. Um, exothermic reaction, release of heat. Uh, Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania. No deaths, injuries, but probably a lot of contamination. So probably will be nasty things happening in the long term. But like Chernobyl in Russia, causes inadequate control room instrumentation and poor emergency response. And the other term is cognitive overload, where you just get too much information. A lot of people have been, because of computers, um, you can design control systems with a ferocious amount of information. But of course, the poor operator can only handle so much. So you've still got to have a very good understanding of the process and what happens when things go wrong. As a system designer, you can't just ramp out a whole lot of computer code and alarms. You've got to think carefully about what happens. The other one which is particularly bad was Bhopal in India. It's a third world country, very poor people. Uh, chemical reaction, a large amount of water got into the, uh, one of the storage tanks. And again, a release of heat, exothermic reaction, exposed the storage tank. Um, horrendous, 4,000 people died, 11,000 disabled. And sadly enough, not many of them got compensated. Milton Haven in the UK, 24th of July, 94. Um, again, probably cognitive overload, I suggest. Yeah, alarm overload, too much information um, to try and deal with the problem. El Paso Production Company, um, no operation of the plant, no plant operating procedures, no uh, inadequate vessel relief devices, and no analysis, has a process has analysis on the original plant design. Slow. BP refinery, again, another problem there. And as, as I say, it can't possibly happen to us. Well, not the case. We've got to take active steps. So just a few little words about safety instrument systems. It's, as I said, I don't want to go into too much detail. This is purely a quick introduction. Safety instrument system is an example of a functional safety system. And obviously, it means that safety depends on the functions being performed correctly. So the two, 61511 and 61508 are the two standards used. Control loop typically has information coming in from your flow meter, for example, the process variable, through to a PLC controller or DCS, and then, of course, control device output manipulated variable. Process safety versus safety control. You should separate the safety controls from the process controls. Very important. So you've got, a, you've got your operating equipment here, and you've got your protection system here, and then you've got your control system there. They're two different issues, and they need to be looked at separately. 
So scope of the safety instrument system is a sensor, logic solver, and then the actuator. And here's a definition of a safety instrument system. You can probably see the um, diagram. Um, sensors, lo logic solver, and then actuators. And the idea is that each subsystem here must um, meet the sole target. So as you can see here, three subsystem sensors, logic solver, actuators, they all can fail, and you can have potential problems. Safety system basics, please excuse the big blotch in the middle of the slide. Um, the idea of safety measures is to reduce the harm. Obviously, otherwise, there's no point. Uh, all the equipment, all the assets. And the risks are basically there because of hazards. So it could be a uh, tank full of caustic soda. And obviously, um, we need to eliminate that or minimize it. Hazard is an inherent physical or chemical characteristic. It has the potential for causing harm. And risk is the severity multiplied by the probability of an event. So obviously, if you have a severity which is huge, probability is that it's going to happen often, all the time, well, then you've got a severe risk against severity which is minimal, no real impact at all. And the probability is once every 10 years, well, that's a very low risk. Here's a simple shutdown example, basic level control with overflow hazard. So here's your level control. Um, vapor hazard here, and uh, level control through there, controlling the valve. Simple shutdown system uh, as a result. Logic cell and your shutdown system is over here. Uh, here's a multi-stage plant trip, emergency shutdown system, stage one, stage two, stage three. So these are all part of the uh, shutdown system. Risk reduction, um, if you have the hazard and it's not, you're not going to be able to adjust the hazard downwards, in other words, it's a pretty bad hazard, you need the only way to try and reduce your risk is to reduce the risk or so in other words, reduce the frequency or reduce the consequences, which is the hazard. So just an example here, um, reduce your risk uh, by limiting the uh, frequency of the occurrence. You have measurement of risk, which is high, low, moderate. Uh, quantitative is probably the more effective. One in 10 years, five people get hurt. Obviously, pretty effective if you can get a pretty good understanding of the numbers. Here's an example of risk versus frequency. And obviously, pretty severe uh, risk, serious injury, consequences, minor injury, frequency very frequently. So the important thing with risk is that it's a frequency of the event multiplied by the consequence. Uh, reduce the frequency or consequence will do both. So obviously the, try, the idea is to try and move it down that way. Frequency, try and make it as very as unlikely as possible. Risk, risk reduction, the design principles are identify the hazard, work out the risk, estimate or calculate it, look at the risk reduction requirements, then go back to the beginning total risk identified, established, and then your safety function defined. So as we said earlier on, safety control systems act independently of the control system. So basically the trick is that if the control system implodes or has a problem, you don't have impact on the safety of the plant. So the trick is, the next term that we're going to look at is a risk reduction factor. RRF, um, and we need to look at that. Oops, I'll turn to my slides here. Oops, a daisy. Anyway, let's just carry on. Um, and here are the safety integrity levels. 
which I want to look at. So this is quite important. So we have a thing called a safety integrity level or SIL. So this is the terms that are thrown around a lot. You have different SILs, one to four. As you can see, a SIL of one is a failure on demand of between 10 to the minus 2 and 10 to the minus 1. 10 to the minus 1 is 1 tenth. 10 to the minus 2 is 1 hundredth. So there's a fairly high probability here, whereas SIL 4 is actually between 10 to the minus 4 and 10 to the minus 5, so extremely slow probability. So the safety integrity level defines the degree of confidence placed in the ability of the system to provide functional safety. So this indicates the quality of care and maintenance taken to avoid systematic errors in design and maintenance. So the SILs that you hear are 1 to 4, as you can hear thrown around a lot. Just bear in mind that this is the range. So, for example, as SIL 1, as we've got an example there, just to go back, uh, SIL 1, 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 1. Um, SIL 1 means safety instrument system with availability of 90% is acceptable. You've got a high level trip in a liquid tank. There's availability of 90%. There's a 10% chance of failure. So one out of every 10 times the high level was reached, there would be a failure. So subsequent overflow, one out of every 10 times. So that gives you a SIL of 1. OK, that's a quick presentation on um, safety instrumentation systems. Hopefully that made some sense. Um, the, uh, excuse the slides changing. I um, grabbed one of the um, well, the clever things on the blackboard here, and I've moved around by mistake, but hopefully you still follow what's going on. Thank you very much. That's Steve McKay from Engineering Institute of Technology.